Hey guys, in the last video I showed you how to derive the equation of motion, in the x direction at least, for a projectile fired under water. And as such, we had to account for the drag force just here, which we assumed was proportional to the velocity of the bullet. So if you don't understand how to get here, I strongly recommend you see part one first, which will be right here. So click on this link. Okay, well the first thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze Newton's law, which says that the sum of forces acting on the bullet in the y direction is equal to the mass of your bullet times by your acceleration of your bullet in the y direction. Well, let's see, what's the sum of forces in your y direction? Well, you've got mg downwards, and you've got kv, or at least the component of kv, in the vertical direction. So let's write this out. We've got minus mg, it's minus because it's down and upwards is positive, and then we've got minus kv sine alpha. This is the component of your drag in your y direction. And that's going to be equal to m times dvy dt. Okay? So, how can we simplify this out? Well, we know v sine alpha is actually equal to v subscript y, which is awesome because that means we get rid of alpha. We know this will be minus mg minus k v subscript y is equal to m dvy dt. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky to integrate. Unfortunately, this pesky mg is stuck over here. So the only way to do this is to divide both sides by this entire left-hand side term. So what we're left with is the integral of minus 1 on m dt is equal to the integral of this, which is going to be 1 over kvy plus mg dvy. Notice I've left the minus sign stuck on the left hand side, but I've divided everything else. Okay, so let's see, how can we derive this? Well, the right hand side is quite tricky. We need to recall a little bit of an integrational trick. Recall that the integral of f dash of x, the derivative of some function f, divided by that same function f, dx is actually equal to log of f of x. Right? This is going to be a useful mathematical trick, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to times the numerator and denominator by k. So I'm going to times the numerator by k, and I'm going to times the denominator by k. And because it's a constant, I can shove it out the integral sign. And then when we integrate, we're going to be left with 1 on k times by log of kvy plus mg plus some integrational constant. And on the left-hand side, we'll be left with minus 1 on m t. Okay, first things first, um, let's find out what our integrational constant is. And to do that, we need to use an initial condition. Recall that at time is equal to 0, vy was v0 sine alpha. Sorry, sine theta, sine theta. Um, our, initial, our initial velocity in the y direction was v0 sine theta. I hope that makes sense. So we can solve for, for c now um, by plugging in this, this value. So on the left-hand side, we'll get 0. And on the right-hand side, we'll get, well, let's see, 1 on k times by log of v0 sine theta. In fact, I, I might not have enough space. Let me just let me make some space here. We know that 0 is going to be equal to 1 on k times log of v0, sorry, k k v0 sine theta plus mg plus c. So we know k goes to 0 if we times it by both sides, so we can get rid of this bad boy just here. And that means then c is actually just equal to negative of this. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we can plug that in and let's do this all in one go. We, we, can, we can write this as minus k on mt, once we times both sides by k, and then we can group the logs together and write this as k v subscript y plus mg all divided by k v0 sine theta plus, plus mg, plus mg. Okay, now I, I know that was a, quite, a, quite a leap to get from there to there, but bear with me, it, sadly it gets a little bit more complex. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exponential both sides and times this denominator by both sides. And when you do that, you're going to be left with, let's see, let's deal with the denominator first. It's going to be k v0 sine theta plus mg times by e to the minus k on m t is equal to, 
what's left here, which will be k v subscript y plus n g. I hope that makes sense. That was also a pretty big algebraic leap, but I assume we're all pretty good if we're here for the second part of this video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get vy, the subject of this equation, by subtracting mg over here and dividing by k. So let's write vy over here. v subscript y is going to be equal to, let's see, v0 sine theta of divided by k plus m on kg times by e to the minus k on mt uh, minus m on kg. Oh, okay, so this is this is a lot of mental math just here, but I hope you're following me. Now I'm running out of space here, so I'll write the next line quite small. We need to integrate to get y once more. So let me write y is going to be equal to the integral of v0 sine theta plus m on kg times e to the minus k on mt minus m on kg times by dt. Now, uh, all I've done is said I need to integrate this to find y, so let's do that. Well, what do we know? We know y is going to be equal to, well, this is a constant, so this will be quite easy to analyze. This will just be minus uh, the reciprocal, so it's going to be m on k, that's the reciprocal of this, times by, let's see, in these square brackets, it's unchanged, it's going to be v0 sine theta plus m on kg, times by e to the minus k on m t minus m on k g t plus an integrational constant. Bam! So far so good. Okay, so I've written that. Now I've also zoomed out to make a little bit of space. So let's actually write down what this term is equal to when we analyze our initial condition. Well we know, in fact let me write it over here, we know that when t is equal to zero we know y is equal to zero. This is by definition based off where we placed our axis. So if we plug this initial condition into here, we can find our value of c. So I'm going to do that over here because I'm running out of space. We know that this is going to be zero on the left hand side and on the right hand side we'll be left with minus m on k times by v0 sine theta plus m on kg times by 1, this is because when t is equal to 0, this exponential turns to 1, minus 0 plus c. Now this is really cool because this means that this right here is a common factor to this. So we can actually factorize this entire thing out. So let's try and do this in one huge step. I hope you can see. So we're going to factorize this entire beast out. All right? um, well, we know that y must then be equal to m on k times by v0 sine theta plus mg on k times by, let's see, we need to account for c and we need to account for this term, so it'll be 1 minus e to the minus k on mt on k on, on uh, minus k on mt minus m on k g t. Oh, that's accounting for our integrational constant as well. Awesome. So this right here is x, this right here is y. I bet you did not expect this coming from such a simple looking problem. A accounting for resistance make this entire thing a whole lot more complicated. As you can tell, this is definitely not parabolic. And to demonstrate that it's not parabolic, let's actually take a quick look of this picture which I've drawn just here, which is something I plotted in Excel using these two formulas. So this right here is an equation you'd expect to get if you plug in a few values. k is equal to 1, m is equal to 1, v0 is equal to 50, and theta is equal to 45. You get this. This is clearly not parabolic. So the equation of motion changes when you deal with a resistance force. And you can see that this can meet your intuition because the thing just suddenly drops off and loses its kinetic energy. As, as it goes along. Anyway, I hope that makes sense, and I hope you understood something. This is a lot of math, but I hope that I actually um, showed you how to do these types of challenging problems. Cheers, guys.